what's the computational complexity of figuring out the shortest path in um, with molecules, with language, with mathematical theorems? It seems like once you have the fully constructed Lego castle, or whatever your favorite Lego world is, figuring out how to get there from the building basic building blocks isn't like a is that an MP hard problem? It's a hard problem. It's a hard problem, but actually, if you look at it, so the best way to look at it, for, let's take a molecule. So if the molecule has um, 13 bonds, first of all, take 13 copies of the molecule and just cut all the bonds. So take cut 12 bonds, and then you just put them in order. Yeah. And then that's how it works. So and you keep looking for symmetry and rep or, or copies, so you can then shorten it as you go down, and that becomes combinatorially quite hard. Mm -hmm. um, for some natural product molecules, um, it becomes very hard. It's not impossible, but we're looking at the bounds on that at the moment. But as the object gets bigger, mm -hmm. it becomes really hard. And But there, th that's the bad news. But the good news is there are shortcuts. And we might even be able to physically measure the complexity without computationally calculating it, which is kind of insane. Wait, wait, how would you do that? Well, in the case of molecule, um, let's, let's, so if you shine light on a molecule, let's take it infrared, the, the molecule has each of the bonds absorbs the infrared differently in mm -hmm. the, what we call the fingerprint region. And so it's a bit like, uh, um, and because it's quantized as well, you have all these discrete kind of absorbances. And my intuition after we realized we could cut molecules up in mass spec, that was the first go at this, mm -hmm. we did it with using infrared and the infrared gave us an even better correlation assembly index and we used another technique as well in addition to infrared called NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance, which tells you about the number of different magnetic environments in a molecule. And that also worked out. So we have three techniques, which each of them independently gives us the same or tending towards the same assembly index for a molecule that we can calculate mathematically. Okay, so these are all methods of mass spectrometry, mass spec. You scan a molecule, it gives you data, in the form of a mass spectrum, and you're saying that uh, the data correlates to the assembly index. Yeah. So how generalizable is that shortcut, first of all, to chemistry, and second of all, beyond that? Because that seems like a nice hack, and you're extremely knowledgeable about various aspects of chemistry, so you can say, okay, it kind of correlates. But, you know, the whole idea behind assembly theory paper, and perhaps why it's so controversial, is that it reaches bigger. It reaches for the bigger general theory of objects in the universe. Yeah, I'd say so, I'd agree. So I've started assembly theory of emoticons with my lab, believe it or not. So we take emojis, yeah. pixelate them, yep. and work out the assembly index of the emoji, yeah. and then work out how many emojis you can make on the path of emojis. So there's the uber emoji from which all other emoji, emo, emojis emerge. Yeah. And then you can, so you can then take a photograph and by looking at the shortest path on, on by reproducing the pixels to make the image you want, you can measure that. So then you start to be able to take um, spatial data. Now there's some problems there. What is then the definition of the object? How many pixels? Um, how do you break it down? And so we're just learning all this right now. So how do you compute the, how would you begin to compute the assembly index of a graphical, like a set of pixels on a 2D plane that form a thing? So well, you would, first of all, determine the resolution. So then what, sure. how, how many, what is your X, Y, and what the number on the X yeah. and Y plane? and then look at the surface area. And then you take all your emojis and make sure they're all looked at the same resolution. Yes. And then we would basically then um, do the exactly the same thing we would do for cutting the bonds. You'd cut bits out of the emoji on the, and look at the, the, you'd have a bag of pixels. So, um, and you would then add those pixels together to make the overall emoji. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, but like, first of all, not every pixels I mean, this is at the core sort of machine learning and computer vision. Not every pixel is that important. And there's like macro features, there's micro features and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Like, what, like uh, you know, the eyes appear in a lot of them. The smile appears in a lot of them. 
So in the same way in chemistry, we assume the bond is fundamental. What we do in there here is we assume the resolution at the scale at which we do it is fundamental. And we're just working that out. And that you're right, that will change, right? Because as you take your lens out a bit, you it will change dramatically. Yeah. But it but it's just a new way of looking at not just compression, what we do right now in computer yeah. science and data, one big kind of um uh um kind of misunderstanding as assembly theory is telling you about how compressed the object is that's not right it's a how much information is required on a chain of events 